heter Peter Kjellin. Jag är moderator här i kväll på den här panelen. Representerar podcasten Nördigt. Och eh, ja, <laughs> tack för det. Vi, eh, vi ska sitta och lära oss imorgon eftermiddag, men det är en sak. Nu så tänkte jag börja med att dra lite så här små detaljer, lite ja, saker som kan vara bra att veta. Och sen så ska vi presentera våra gäster ikväll. Eh, om ni behöver gå ut under panelen så kan ni försöka göra det så diskret som möjligt så att man inte stör det säger sig själv, eller om man behöver gå och kissa eller sånt här. Eh, efter den här panelen så kommer gästen... Som det vore hemligt. Han kommer att på vår special guest area och signera och sådär, så att, eh, det kan vara bra att sticka dit så fort som möjligt efter panelen. Det ligger ungefär i andra änden av lokalen, den här stora salen. Så med det sagt så tycker jag att vi presenterar kvällens huvudgäst. Han har varit bondskurk, marvelskurk, skurkskurk. Ja, vi får kolla lite grann om det. En varm applåd för Mats Mikkelsen. Right? He used <laughs> so you couldn't really compare it. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, 
mean, to be frank, we knew that well, when we were scoring, you know, the bad guys rarely survived too much. <laughs> so we uh, figured out that we have to gang up on him if we have to deal with him. <laughs> yeah. Alright. So, uh, and you're Danish, obviously. Yep. <laughs> As we were talking about. Um, how often do you visit Sweden? Sweden and, uh, Not that often. Off? I, mean, I, mean, I worked here once. Uh, in Stockholm. In Stockholm. Oh, so I put the Göteborg. You know, the legs at Göteborg. So that's a long time ago. I, I uh, and I had to learn the language because nobody had a clue what I said. <laughs> and it was strange because everybody from Copenhagen understands Swedish, easy peasy. But uh, every time I said something and I thought it was mildly funny, yeah. I was just looking at these blank faces. <laughs> and then. Uh, well, I realize we don't have the same, same sense of humor either, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's the language. It could be that subject. Yeah, you know, yeah, but no, I, I, I've been here a lot with films and, you know, opening a film and, and I worked here and uh, it's my it's my, my bigger brother, it's my neighbor, big brother, right? So, close to it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we've been talking about uh, some movies, uh, roles of yours. Um, there are probably some gamers here tonight, too. <laughs> Uh, Hideo Kojima to work with. Well, he's uh, he's fantastic. I mean, he's uh, we have an interpreter between us. But he's, he understands everything in all English. I'm sure he speaks really well, but he doesn't want to do it, so he has somebody translating. And it's that you know that it's interesting with Japanese or Asian languages that <clears throat> if you ask a question, if I ask you know. Uh, should I go right here? Then the translator would go. And it goes on for five minutes. It's like, and then he would say, yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's, sometimes there's a little lot of translate. He's a wonderful man. And he's, a, he's such a positive energy. Uh, his mind is obviously working on a completely different frequency than the rest of ours. Uh, and he's just so happy to be around actors and, uh, and make them do exactly what he wants them to do. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a fantastic experience, unlike anything else you would ever do as an actor. Right. So I don't want to steal all the questions, because obviously all these people might have questions. And we have microphone over here. And uh, form a line. Swedes are excellent at forming lines, right? Wow. Okay. One question per person. Um, of, of course, and then when you're done, you might, you may go to the back of the line if you want to. But please follow the line if you have any questions. Let's open up the floor for questions to us. That's one. I see one. One. <laughs> Two. 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 What's happening? Um. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that, Mike. Oh, that's a chair. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So there. All right. Hi. What's your name? Nice. My name is Ida. Um, Ida. I have a question about Hannibal Lecter. If he was to be presented, he's a psychologist, so if he was to be presented with a child who has experienced abuse at home, how would he deal with the situation? If he was to be presented with what? Sorry, sorry again? With a... A child who has gone through abuse at home. Well, I'm sure <laughs> Hannibal Lecter is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I, I guess that child would really fast become um, a, a micro devil. He would teach the child to fight back and probably just tell him what he always tells people, like, eat the root. <laughs> uh, so I think, I think he would enjoy that. My name is Frederick, and uh, my question for you is, uh, well, I do have a question and I would like to do a request about the uh, Louis uh, My question for you is, well, how is it to go from a Marvel or Star Wars production from the movies to a video game production and like get that stranding? Like, are, are there any similarities or are there a lot more differences or what's your take on it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there are... Um... Well, the differences are obviously that one is a full story from A to Z, 
we know our character, we know where it's going, and we can discuss back and forth how to approach that with the director. Uh, whereas in a video game, uh, obviously for many reasons, he's not going to tell us exactly what's going to happen in this game. So we are doing generic, generic things, and also sometimes little scenes. We're not sure where this is going, but he will use it somehow with his brilliant mind. So we're not in the same, we're not looped in in the same way as we would be in a, in a film. Similarities, obviously, uh, on a, on a, on a uh, say, Star Wars film or, a, or the uh, Doctor Strange, there is quite a bit of green screen shooting. There's a lot of special effects stuff that will happen later. And, and that's, that's all we're doing in, in Hideo Kojima's work. I mean, we're dressed up in tights, green. The big pong balls. Yeah, yeah, right. balls and a, and a, uh, what's it called? Mo 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 Cap? Mo 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 and uh, and we're basically just running around looking like really stupid dancers. And, <laughs> and, but, but the good thing is that everybody looks like that, so you're not alone. Uh, so, 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 yeah, the special effect part is, is kind of similar sometimes. Okay. And I was uh, gonna request that you do that Doctor Decasinius, Doctor Strange uh, steps that you did when he puts, uh, when the Doctor Strange put Casinius in bondage, but I don't think anyone wants to see that here. So. <laughs> There's something with the mic, you gotta go a little closer, I'm not sure I can hear what you say. I was gonna suggest that you do the steps from Doctor Strange when the doctor oh, when it gets so, uh, when it gets caught by the yeah, yeah. You can the pay me for that way. <laughs> <laughs> Some. 
obviously the Danish ones are very few, we don't do films like that. Uh, but the, the difficult thing with special effects is that if you're fighting an enormous monster, like a giant scorpion, like I did in a film called Clash of the Titans, uh, they're not there because you can't get scorpions that big. You know. And then you have to imagine it that somebody's running around with a stick and a tennis ball on it, right? And then why is, why is it always a tennis ball? It, it's for everyone to have an eye on right? So if there's more than one person in the scene, we have to look at the same thing. It could be something else, you're right. I think maybe a ball. Could be a yeah. ball. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll suggest that. <laughs> uh, so, but that is, that's a little tricky. And I remember that, you know, we were in Seven Wars, you know, running after this, these scorpions or whatever. And, uh, and none of us had ever done anything like it. We felt sweet, really done, you know. And then uh, Sam Worthington, he just came from two years' work on Avatar. And he, that's the only thing he did on that, just green screen. And then he just went, whoa, and he ran after this monster. And the rest of us were like, all right, no, let's go. <laughs> uh, so, so that is a little tricky when you don't have anything. But in, in, in terms of uh, Dr. Strange, it was not that bad. It was more the surroundings, uh, the buildings, the streets that went upside down. Uh, and and it, some of it was built for us, so we could run on a wire, run on the ceiling upside down. And sometimes it was just happening in the background. But we didn't have to interact with it, so it wasn't actually that difficult in this situation. Thank you. You're welcome. Just waiting for the big chance. 
And I think that the way we work at Skin and Ever is, um, is really solid. It's, it's, we, we have the eye on the wall, we like to work with people, we have good ideas. So I think that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Hello, Hello. Uh, my name is Adam, and I was going to ask you a question about uh, Mr. Kojima, actually. Um, since uh, he has gotten uh, yeah, uh, his hands on uh, stars like Norman Reedus and even uh, yeah, the uh, other uh, big directors and such, how were you approached by him and why did you accept? Uh, I was approached through a uh, mutual friend of ours and I can't reveal his name because I'm going to reveal other things that I'm not allowed to. So it was through him that I met up. Uh, and he pitched it to me, my friend, and I was like, what, what video game, what do you do? This. And then I met video, and he showed me the stuff, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what is this? This is, I'm a big fan of graphic novels, and his world is just beyond, I mean, it's, it's extreme, it is beautiful, it is, it is, uh, it's radical. Uh, so for me, that was actually a complete new world that opened up there, and I'm very grateful that, that he invited me in. Thank you. You're welcome. Classic Lucky Luke uh, and Tim Taylor and, and stuff like that. And later on, it became Jodorowsky and Remus, Tati, a lot of European Very much traders. Yeah. Will Eisner was a big fan. Will Eisner, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's the whole universe I think is super fascinating, especially when you're a kid. Yeah. But also still now. I mean, the problem with it is that it, they keep producing it. You do, I mean, you don't have that much money, you can't buy it all. You keep coming. You know, a little like here. I guess if you guys are collectors of these things, I was like, it never stops. They keep producing, you know, and you gotta have it all. Yeah, I have it all. Have you been around the floor? Have you seen some I've seen stuff? Seen I'm very little. I saw very little, but I've seen it before, and it's it's quite immaculate. Look, some of the artists and some of the stuff you can collect. Do you think you will buy something uh, here? I, I I mean, when my kids are smaller, I tend to. It, it is also tends to if I bring stuff back home, my wife will get me and go. <laughs> Up on the attic. So it's like, that's a, it's not a good reason for me to do it anymore. Do you, uh, sorry, uh, do you have, a, I must ask, do you have yourself as an action figure from like Star Wars or Doctor Strange? I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you kids play with them? No, because the kids are too big for that, and I punch them. Uh, I got quite a few on Hannibal, and, and, and I got uh, quite a few on, on Doctor Doc Strange. Yeah. But then there was a rumor that they were not making one of me in Star Wars. And I kept complaining. And I moaned. Every time I saw a producer, I was like, do you have a minute? And then eventually they gave up and came in. Here you go, that's what I <laughs> So I mean, it would be a disaster to be the guy who invented the Death Star and not have the statues. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Hello. My name is Ren. I would like to ask you a question about your career. How did you start this? Like, what was your, was it your dream, or what was the starting of all this career of getting a movie action and stuff like that? Becoming a movie character? Uh, coincidence. It was not when I was a kid. Uh, I, I wanted to be Bruce Lee when I was little. Uh, not an actor, I just wanted to be Bruce Lee. You know? yeah. uh, and, um, well, I mean, we watched a lot of films when we were kids, me and my brother, and we listened to what we have here in Scandinavia called Radio Theatre. Yes. A lot of thrillers and stuff, and we could do all the voices by heart. And, um, but I never imagined that you could become an actor. I thought that was something that you know, was running in a family, and then you could pass it on to your kids. Uh, then, out of nowhere, I, I was asked to be in a musical in the background because I was a gymnast. So they needed some people to drip around in the background and also do some little dancing steps and moves. And the choreographer thought I was pretty good at that, so she asked me if I wanted to learn the craft of dancing. And then I realized that uh, that was only girls and I would be the only man. So I said, yeah, let's give that a chance. <laughs> uh, so I was a professional dancer for nine years. And then um, I was always a bit more in love with the, with the drama of dancing than the aesthetic. 
So I asked myself, why don't you just try to do drama full time and, and I applied for school. So it's been a little detour to get that. Thanks a lot for your answer. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, 
I don't, I, I'm the only person in the entire film, except for one of the person that will pop up. Uh, so that was a very brutal shoot, and, and the, the nature was brutal. I mean, everything was brutal. It was so cold. It was crazy. Uh, we had one day we were stepping out of the car, and the winds were so crazy that when I opened the car, the door ripped off and flew away. <laughs> I mean, there was something going on. So we decided to at least wait a couple of hours before we started shooting. <laughs> and, but that was basically what was happening up there. From one second to the next, it was just, you could work in it, conditions. And, 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 uh, but it, it shows on the film, and I think it's, uh, it plays a major part. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great time. Thank, Thank you so much.
Giovanni. Uh, when it comes to Danish uh, productions, you of course have an amazing collaboration with Antes Thomas Jensen. And uh, I always wonder why is there no collaboration between you and Lars Frontier yet? Yeah, I wonder that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know Lars. Um, quite a few years back, we tried to do something, I couldn't make it, so it didn't happen. Uh, I don't think, I mean, you, you watch his films, he's, he's predominantly Swedish actors and American actors, so he uses very few Danes anyway. Uh, so, but maybe if he does play his film, maybe he will call me, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hi. Um, my name is Emily. You, you can adjust the mic before and drop on the wheel. Oh, there, thanks. Um, my name is Emily. And I do a lot of drama, so I know it's really hard to get into character. And I was just wondering if you have like a special way to get into a character you're going to play. Yeah, um, to, to get into a character, how we do that? Yeah. I mean, well, again, it's, the script is, is uh, without being necessarily here, is is our bible. In there is the story, and in there is our character. And we talk back and forth with our fellow actors, and mainly with our director, of course. And we kind of narrow down uh, what this is and, and who this guy is. Uh, we might make some changes to make it clearer. Uh, I, I kind of use myself a lot in the sense that uh, I recognize all kind of energies and emotions, and I'm sure you do as well, everybody in here do, but we only identify ourselves with a small percentage of this feeling, of that emotion, and then, but if the character has a lot of that, then I will narrow in on that for myself, and I will turn up the volume, and I will try to throw some of my own private sides away. And eventually, the more you narrow it down, it becomes a character, but I recognize it in me. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, and obviously, 
dramatized uh, in this film, but uh, it, there is nothing more scary. Uh, I mean, this, if this guy was accused of robbing a bank, right? the whole community would not, you know, would not turn his back on him. Someone might even give him a high five, you know. And then if he turned out not to be guilty, then it's all good. Hey, it's cool, let's have a drink. But if it's something to do with children, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of fear uh, is so enormous uh, that, that this kind of thing will happen. There's no way that he can go back to that society. Uh, so it is a brutal film. It was heartbreaking to make it, and it was heartbreaking to watch it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alexander. Just have to say that I love The Hunt. Excellent film. Wow. Uh, this might be a complicated question, but who is, in your opinion, the most talented director that you've worked with? And what has that person done differently that resonates with you as an actor? Again, it's one of those questions, if I did have an answer for it, I wouldn't give it to you. <laughs> for obvious reasons, that means that all the other ones uh, <laughs> don't hate me. <laughs> I could have guessed that. I, I, I work differently with everyone. Everyone has to be tackled differently. Um, and everybody works differently. So, so the, my collaboration with, with Honest Thomas Jensen in the crazy, dark, dangerous comedy is one way. It is, it is a it is one way of, of you diving down in the script and come up with ideas and just sit day in and day out and laugh. And it's like, oh, we can't, we're not allowed to do this. We should do this. Let's do it. You know, uh, come up with crazy ideas. My work with the uh, Negroes with the graphic is very, uh, not so articulate. My job is to drag it out of him somehow. Uh, and that turned out that we were good at helping each other that way. My uh, Thomas Winterberg uh, from from Jakob, uh, again a different way. Um, I think that we had a lot of common with him, and, and we, we talk very straightforward as friends. Uh, so again, it's a very different way. I mean, they all push me somewhere. Yeah. They all push me somewhere that 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 we all need to be pushed for to in order to make a film. And I can go on down the list with a lot of crazy people I work with. Okay, thank you so very much. Thank you. Hello, uh, hi. My name is uh, Fabian, <laughs> and uh, I would like to know uh, what qualities does your like if you would have a dream director to work with, what qualities would they have? What qualities? Yes. Well, first of all, I, I like to be able to communicate with my director in the sense that we don't have to agree, but we have to be able somehow to disagree that we will. Uh, um, don't talk to me at least, and we can disagree. So, but, but that's the thing. I, you, you have to. I, I can't just work with somebody who says, do that. We have to back and far forth and come up with even better ideas than that's a possibility. And a director I've been a fan of since I was a child, or at least a teenager, is, is Martin Scorsese. I think he's a, he's a masterful director. Uh, and if I got a chance to work with him one day, that, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uphill from now, 
but but there's something wrong with that girl as well, right? Uh, so I guess that it's it's a really twisted brother sister relationship that got going there, and and I think there is an opportunity to, to get some really interesting scenes out of a, a uh, non walking Bodhinia. <laughs> Yeah, they were great.